Okay. So today we are going to look at uh, marketing planning and I hope you have already put that heading as I said. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that later on about the recordings. Now, uh, I'm sure you put your heading to say marketing planning, eh? Yes, and I was sir. saying those of you, those of you that uh, we started together discussing, we looked at the concepts that have to do with marketing and some definitions of what marketing is all about and things like that. And I'm sure we appreciated that point. Eh? Now, before we proceed again, let's uh, define another term, a plan. And I would need your contribution to that. What is a plan? Who would like to start? And I want you to use the word plan, not as a verb, but as a noun. What is a plan? Any contribution? Hey, is my audience with me? We're here. Are you sure? Then die. I'm here. <laughs> what do I'm you think? What's the plan? The <laughs> plan? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm thinking. Yeah, what do we call a plan? Madam Mukawe, thank you for joining. Welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Manda, what is the plan? <laughs> Let me try, sir. Yeah, sure. No, you shouldn't okay. really try because these things you do them at work. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. So, I what is the plan? A plan, a plan is any uh, written um, goals or objective which one is supposed to do within a specific time. Okay. Yeah, there's one aspect which I would agree there written. Yeah, but the plan is not a go. Mm. No, because a go a go is a destination. Am I, am I right? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So now, what is the plan then? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Let me give you an example. I'm sure. All of you, you are in your homes now. I guess so. Although you sir, may decide. I wanted, wanted, to, to, wanted to ask. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you you agreed you agreed with Mr. Um, is it Mr. Tendai? Mr. Manda. Uh -huh. oh, Mr. Banda, you're saying a, a plan. Manda. Manda. And uh, yes, you're saying a plan should be written. So what, what if in an, in an instance or in a scenario where I just think of, okay, um, I want to do this and that, but I don't get to write it down. That does not qualify to be a plan unless it's written down. What do you think? What do others think? It has to be written down. It could be um, a proposal, a detailed proposal, a decision, something to be made or built. So you, I don't know, something like a proposal. <laughs> ah, Tendai, if I propose you, is that a plan? No, I mean a proposal. You That's my area of concern. Okay, a detailed, maybe a decision to do something. <laughs> a decision. <laughs> 
<laughs> so when you when you when you decided to do this course, is that the plan? Not really, but I sat down Not and really. made a plan. With her. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah, that is good. If you did exactly. that, because Madam <laughs> Madam Tendai. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. 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 John Perry just asked uh, in an instance mm -hmm. where uh, before you decided to to do your masters, yes. was it was it something that you had to write down or you just thought about it and say, okay, I think uh, at this time or this period I want to do my masters, and by the time it's one. Year, mm -hmm. I think I'm Not. Not necessarily, but then if we uh, if we put it in, uh, let's say, a work environment, when we are planning something, we sit down and write it down. I mean, you have Thank to write you. it down. As you are planning, you write down your plan. Yeah. And so those ones can... which we just, the ones that we just think about mm -hmm. are not plans. Okay. What you do is maybe what you can call planning. Mm -hmm. Planning is thinking. Mm. But a plan, it has to be a result of your thinking. Don't you think so? And that result must be written. So when it is written, it's called what? Don't use the same word, it's a plan. When it, what's the other term for something which is written? <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. Okay, for example, I was saying, most of you, you are already in, in your homes, I guess. And maybe in your own house or, yeah. Think about the house where you are. Mm. Before you, 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 before you built that house, what did you do? You had to make a plan. Good. And the, where did you take that plan? The architecture or the builder. Aha. Uh -huh. No, no, no. For before architecture, architecture, in fact, is maybe the person who helped you anyway. Mm -hmm. So you cannot do to the architecture. The architecture helped you to to draw the plan. And that that plan now you take it you you had to take it to some place for approval. What was that? Where was that? The council. The council. Yeah. And now you can all picture that plan ka? of your yes. building. Yes. yes. What could yes. be the other term that you can call for that plan? Hmm. And it starts from the way the Mr. Manda said, a written what? Hmm. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very simple. It's something that you use every day. And you have said it correctly. And that is the one you can take even for management to approve anyway. Mm. Okay, I'll say it. I'll, I'll say it. <laughs> I would say it. No, it's a it's a written document. Yeah. Okay. Do you agree, Mr. Chung? I agree. Yeah. When you're talking about a plan, it's a document. And it's known that uh, Zambians are good in coming up with documents, plans, ka? What is our biggest problem? Implementation. Exactly. We've got very, very nice uh, uh, plans which lie. And it's because we plan and we never look to, the, to, to eat back. And you know what we lie upon? Just our thinking on a daily basis. We never re make reference to it. It's never our Bible. But we'd rather what you are thinking at that particular time. And uh, Believe me, if you have a boss that has plans in his brain or in his thoughts, then you are going to be in big problems. Yeah, insist that you must have plans that are written. Then everybody can make a reference to them. 
that's a starting point. Okay, now, okay. what you said, some of you about the goals, strategies, and this, those are the contents. We find in that document, we are calling a plan. So we need to stipulate or come up with the contents of that plan, which we are calling marketing plan. Good. So when we put ING now, it becomes a, a process. So there must mm. be a process that is, we go through when we're coming up with a plan. We're calling it a process. And then there must also be tools that are going to help us to come up with a plan. I hope, hope you have seen that I've mentioned the three things. Eh? I've mentioned the three things. Oh, Madam Tendai, maybe you can close. Okay, thank you very much for muting. Yeah. So we are saying we have mentioned the three things. I've mentioned that there is a, a process, which is a thinking process that you go to go through. Then I've said there is a plan, which is a document, and then I said there are tools we need to use. So now. What I would like you to do then is you need to landscape, landscape your page. Or if you don't landscape your page, you can use the double where you have, then you can uh, uh, left and right. We're going to fill in the landscaped page together. And that landscaped page must have three equal columns, if you like. Three equal columns. Okay, and I hope you've done that. Eh? So on the left hand side, you are going to put a, remember your heading is marketing planning, eh? Yeah. Then the, uh, after this, you remind me because we need to talk about why do we need to come up with a plan, eh? A marketing plan. Then you will be, whatever answers you'll be giving me will be correct. <laughs> I hope so. After we've gone through this. So now, on the left hand side of your column, of your page, put process. Process. Okay. On the middle of your page, you put plan. So you underline both words, process, underline, plan, underline. Good. Okay. Then the, the far end, you should put the tools. Tools, you underline that one. So quickly, let's say, uh, go to process. At this stage, before I go to process, can I ask, have you all drawn exactly what I've said? Or anybody has drawn something else? You said the first column should be process. Good. Then plan. Good. And then tools. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, but you underline them, mine. Eh? So let's go to the first, first, first step of the process. And these steps are going, all going to be in question form. Why question form? Because we want to provoke our thinking. Yeah, provoke our thinking. So the first one, is where are we now? Where are we now? Okay, that's the first one. Go to uh, the plan. Now, under plan, you're going to put one that one, you leave it blank. 
come down on the next line you put put two you leave it blank come to number three down the line and call it uh, situation analysis situation analysis mm -hmm. mr kakoma you can mute your mic thank you okay so you've put now situation analysis some people or in some literature are going to find they call it current situation analysis that's okay uh, go to the tools so we we'll start from the top there number one two number one is called pastel pastel now you should put capital p capital e capital s capital t capital l e capital l pastel okay it's something you have come across i'm sure uh, you're a bit familiar or well, you are very familiar with it but however flip the page of your book we want to itemize what is to be found in the those areas of the pastel so we'll be describing each of those letters and those as we are estimizing them and looking at what we need to write under each of those this is what you are going to put in that section of the plan called situation analysis and it must appear like that good who can remind us what is p what does p stand for anyone anyone um p stands for political this is you Good. analyze the political, political situation in the country that's right or in the market yeah. okay thank you so let's put political environment you have to analyze oh sorry okay I'm, i was kicked up out a bit i'm back yeah so you said the mr manda said you analyze the political situation what is it that you or what questions would you ask there first of what is it that you analyze um for example you analyze the um if if in a in a, in a certain country there are wars, mm -hmm. or is it that the political environment is stable in terms of um, the actual political activities? Okay, good. So, put in number. The first thing you are interested in is uh, stability. Stability. Now he says stability. There, you want to analyze. Remember, you you are also uh, looking at the trends, eh? Yeah. So you want to analyze absence of war and presence of peace yeah that's now we are talking about stability is this is absence of civil wars and rest and all those things and there is peace now remember as you are writing this we are just mentioning them your job is always to think about how each of those factors affect your business and how each of those is going to affect your plan if uh, you anticipate in 2021 to be problem like how are you going to how will that affect your plan that's the point you must not uh, forget so stability what else can we probe on the 
uh, political scenario or political environment of the country. Okay, I'll mention some of them. You also want to talk about the policies. Because the government is the one that comes up with policies. What policies are there now which affect your business? Or what policies do you anticipate any changes to some of those policies? Or do you anticipate new policies to come on board? And how will those policies affect your business? For example, uh, it started with the, what we now call Employment Act, started as a policy and they deliberated over it. So if such things were to come and you are planning, must state how it's going to affect your business and how it's going to affect your planning as it were. Okay. The third one is about uh, uh, issues of governance. Now, under governance, you want to put uh, things like, uh, under governance, you want to put uh, things like uh, uh, how government is formed. How is the government formed? By the way, how, 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 how do governments, how are governments formed? Eh? Or how do people get to state house, if I can ask that question? How do you take people to state house? We elect them. Good. So one of the areas you want to talk about is about it through ballot. Through ballot. What do you anticipate about elections that are forthcoming? Those are some of the things you want to think about. Okay. Then uh, another way in which uh, uh, people get to state house by bullet. Do you anticipate any coups with what is going on? Another way is uh, people get to state house by inheritance. Yeah. Those that are still have kingdoms, or in some countries, was that not a Guinea? Guinea is somewhere, some, some country called Guinea, where the father handed over to the son. Yeah. Some uh, uh, methods of getting to state house is by um, popular revolt. Popular revolt where people just get agitated and they're not happy anymore. Now, the question you have is, any of those, do you anticipate anything that would occur during the time that you're going to do your plan? You describe it and you anticipate what impact it might have on your business. That is what is important. Also, by the way, it matters who is in state house, right? Believe me, it matters. And we see that uh, happening uh, with, uh, with the behavior of the currency, for example. That means how much uh, confidence uh, does the business community have for people who are in there, who are ruling? It matters. Yeah. If you're not are you anticipating change or not, that's what you would write. That's about the political. You can see there's a lot that you can talk about. Eh? Not to talk about the political system, if there will be any change, for example, do you anticipate from democracy to go back to socialism, as somebody is already suggesting that, things like that. Aha. Uh -huh. So those are some of the areas that you got to look at. Then the number E in the pastel. So now we are talking about at E, we are looking at E. What is E? The first E. It is economical. Good. The economy. The economy. So it's economic environment. 
So under economic yes. environment, there are a lot of other issues then that you need to probe in as you are writing. What would you, uh, what could be some of the areas that you want to talk about under uh, economic? Inflation rate, you can talk of inflation rate. You can talk about inflation rate because you are concerned about the prices in for your for your products and services, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, how would that impact on that? Another one? Um, also the exchange rate, as you said. Okay, the exchange rate, exactly. You'll be concerned about that, especially that you are importing most of the goods and you, especially your raw materials. How that impact on your importations and your budget the next period? Good, Mr. Kakoma? Uh, the tax. Okay, uh, tax is not about the economic. Oh, okay. No, we'll talk about tax uh, shortly. It's got the connotation of uh, the policies of the government and the, the last uh, letter in the pastel. Uh huh. Uh, what about the, which other ones would you be concerned and the economic factors? How about uh, things to do with uh, unemployment, employment levels, or unemployment levels? And look at uh, what that impact uh, on your uh, company in terms of uh, uh, disposable income. Will people be able to buy things or not if they're not employed? Yeah. How big will the market if people don't have the money? OK. And uh, you're interested in those employment rates. You may also be interested in the GDP, yeah, growth uh, domestic products. That shows the, at what rate the government or the, the economy is growing. Whether small or big your business is, that will be affected by that as well. At what level is the economic development of your country might be another area that you may want to look at. Can you classify yourself as the least developed country? developing country or developed country whichever way you look at it those are some of the are you is the economy in the recession or recovery or is it in a boom all those cycles are also important to to look at yes we can go on and on talk about mostly those macro environment yeah the macro environment of macroeconomic environment of the of, of the market or the country so to speak thank you how about uh, the s in the pastel s what are we going to talk about what does the s stand for social <laughs> yes good so there you go to describe the social cultural structure of the of the economy or the country first of all you got to understand the culture in the country the way things are done and how that affect in terms of business very very important do you anticipate a shift or changes in the cultural tendencies of the people or not yeah then when it comes to social aspect you want to also uh, look at uh, uh, demographic structure, the population structure of the country. It's very important. Uh, we know, for example, in Zambia, the structure is a pyramid, uh, pyramid like, pyramid, pyramidic like, meaning those from one year to 15 years, is it up to 20 years? I don't know make up almost 50% of the population. And then those above 70, 65 and above, they make up maybe only 5% of the population. What does that imply? That kind of a structure. It's got huge implications in terms of employment, in terms of the economy itself. Yeah, huge. Uh, uh, implications to it. 
So meaning then you only are going to have a working, pl a working class, which is uh, less than 35% of the population, for example. So now if you get that, less than 35% of population of working class, and that working class uh, minus other people who cannot even work uh, because of their circumstances, the number shrinks further, 20%. And to 30 percent. Now, if that's the class that you are talking about, how would that support the whole economy? It means they have to support the 50 percent younger ones who are not working. They got to support the 10 percent on top of people who are old. That's why you are always under stress if you are working. It's because of such structure. Now. Do you anticipate any changes to st this structure? And the, in the social, we are going to talk about even the social infrastructure themselves. For example, availability of health issues, school issues, education that is, health issues, education issues, uh, social infrastructure that uh, could be there, uh, include uh, also sometimes roads and things like that. Now, those you must be able to state. If uh, the levels of education, by the way, very important also, uh, religion, because some products, you know that uh, if the levels of education are low, you cannot even sell those pr products because the number of products that are sold, they go along with education, including what we are doing now. We are using these gadgets because you and me have been to school. We have been taught how to use these gadgets. But imagine people in the villages, right? Yeah. Levels of education, very important. And with levels of education, also, we can help us to see in terms of skilled labor that you may need. Yeah. So there's a lot that we can probe under that one as well. I'll leave the other parts that you can be able to add on them. Good. Let's look at uh, T. What does T stand for? Technological. Yes. So we're going to talk about technological environment in that aspect. Here, uh, Maybe we can just uh, divide it into three. There is what you can call apparatus. These are like uh, hardware, machines, and things like that. And uh, what you're interested in is to find out, are they available? Availability, affordability, and appropriateness of that technology. Not necessarily, don't think of necessarily, necessarily means advanced and things like that, no. Okay, appropriateness is very important. So that's about apparatus, is equipment and tools and machinery. Then, uh, next one is what you can call systems, procedures and systems. This is can be equated to software, if you like. How are the systems in the country, systems that you're going to follow even in the, in the industry that are followed in the industry, procedures that are followed, those are the ones part of that technology. Third is people, the skills that people ought to have. That is very important, okay. Okay, so we are done with the E, I mean T. Let's go to the last E, the second E. What does the second E stand for? Environmental, maybe. Environmental, yes. No. Mm. Why no? Mm. Remember, I've said we talked about the political environment, economic environment. Mm -hmm. Social, cultural environment, technological environment. 
So that when you can call it environment, environment, can we? Because all of these are environment. So what could be our E? The other E. Well, you guessed well, but for us to avoid calling it environment, environment, we can either call it physical environment. But a good term is called ecological environment. Ecological environment. So under ecological environment, we'll be concerned about everything that has to do with the physical natural resources. Now, we will be talking about, uh, uh, regardless of the business, by the way, you need to talk about the uh, ecological environment, physical environment, pollution issues, usage of the natural resources, what uh, plans do you have for replacement, for example, if ever you, you, you are involved in cutting trees, deforestation, that's an issue. We must also talk, want to talk about waste management. Regardless of the business, you got to state how you're going to contribute to keep Lusaka clean, keep Zambia clean, for example, as a company. In your plans, it must come out that way. Good. Uh, you're going to talk about uh, uh, how, in general, the company will take care of the resources for the sake of the coming generation. This is where now you talk about uh, uh, friendly products, environmental friendly products. That's what they call them. Yeah. Okay. The last one, L. What does the L stand for? What environment is that? After we talked about the ecological environment. The L legal. environment? Yes, legal environment. What would you, what would you, what would you write about uh, on that legal environment? What would you say about the legal environment? Well, you write about it. anything or acts, laws that affect your business, and there are a lot. You believe me that there are so many laws that affect the business. Now, uh, for the sake of planning, what you want to do, you want to anticipate any changes of those laws. That's what you need to do. Okay? Uh, do you anticipate any changes in Employment Act? Do you uh, anticipate any changes in the Companies Act? Do you expect any changes in the uh, uh, Sale of Goods Act? Do you uh, uh, changes in safety, compensation, in NPF? Do you expect any changes in taxation law? That's where taxation can form. Because it's an act. As it were. Okay, Madam Kalonga, maybe check your mic. Okay, good. So that's about it. The pastel now. You've just, can you imagine if you were going to write all this, describing all of this? You can imagine how many pages eh? you will end up. Four or five pages describing each of those in details. That's two number one. Let's go to two number two. Go back to your, to your column for twos. Now you put two. We shall call this as uh, uh, 
industrial competitive analysis industrial competitive analysis now it's also popularly known as the Porter's five forces maybe you have already come across this Porter's five forces Now, what uh, Professor Michael Porter stated is that uh, on the market or in, in particular industry, remember the first one we were describing is for the whole general nation. Now you would go specifically to a particular industry or market in which your business operate. Now there he says there are five forces at play. Okay. Anybody who has come across them, who would want to highlight them? Okay. Force number one. Hello. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, one of the first one of the the forces is um, competition in the industry. Good, and it's known as rivalry when there's a stiff competition, meaning those who are producing goods similar or closer to your goods, yeah, you're competing. They are, you are like, there's livery, yeah. So for example, if it's like a millimil industry, you look at all those producing millimil, they are your competitors in that particular environment. Good, that's one force or one category of the force. The second category is, uh, yes, Mr. Chung, we want to say? It's the threat of new entry. Good. Threat of new entry. Those that, thank you. Those that would uh, anticipate that some people want to, to come in. Like, for example, if it's in the mid industry, you can't say, mm, we have circulated, we are so many of us. Ah, all of a sudden you hear, no, the cooperatives, they are putting up the solar millimil, meals all over the country that become your competition they are begin to play or oh, some guys some chinese and some zambians have joined hands together they are coming up with a very big meeting company then you will anticipate that kind of increase of your competition good first number two first number three What could be if the again, power of suppliers also it's one good of them. exactly meaning in a given industry or market there are people who are supplying goods and not only goods they're also supplying their skills or services could be consultants it could be just employees it could be all those who are supplying what are they going to do they'll be bargaining with you they want a, a good price good quality uh, I mean, a good, good price that you should give them, good terms uh, of payments and things like that, that they will be looking for. Your reputation that you'll be able to pay them quickly. They're going to bargain over that. Thank you. The, that is number three. Number four? A force number four? The buyers will also bargain. Exactly. Thank you. So there's going to be also another bargaining power by the buyers. Buyers also, they will be also bargaining that you shouldn't uh, exploit them. Yeah. And then they'll also be uh, uh, bargaining in terms of quality of the goods that was, and the other services that you're going to give them. They'll be bargaining. They can even be comparing your business with another competitor and said, ah, those ones are more cheaper than yourselves, for example. Yeah. So that brings in pressure on the businesses as well. It's a pressure that you need to find a way of how to handle. But it's a tool that is going to help us to analyze and understand how stiff this kind of comp competition is. The last one, number five. Um, I think the fifth one is the threat of substitute products. Exactly. Yeah. Substitute products can come in many ways, actually. 
you can substitute things in the, the nature of the product itself or in the system, in the procedure of how the thing is being delivered and things like that. All those things can be substituted. Yeah. Uh, as you move on, you will learn how sometimes how we should look at each of these elements that we have just mentioned. But at the moment, we want to end by saying that you can use this as a tool to help us to analyze. And this must also appear in your plan. You're going to put it in your plan. We are still only section three, situation analysis under the plan. Two number three, uh, I'll mention it and I'll ask you to Google it. Maybe you'll find it. It's called marketing audit. Marketing audit. In the marketing audit, you're going to find the, <clears throat> the elements that have to do with the external environment. And there's a lot of series of questions that you need to be answered. In fact, the marketing audit is almost uh, a questionnaire, actually. It's a big questionnaire, which needs to be filled in. So the external environment, and then they will talk about the internal environment. And then they will also talk about uh, that you can evaluate and review your mission, your vision, and your goals. That document allows you to do that. The others, no. But that particular one, we do not put it inside the document of a plan. It just helps us. The only part that you put away from this document called marketing audit, it's when you have reviewed a vision, mission, or the goals of the company. Those ones, you have to put them there. But the rest of others, no, they will coincide with the pastel. And the next one we're going to mention. The next one you are mentioning, which is number four, two number four, is a SWOT. SWOT. We know what it stands for, for sure. S O S W O T. Uh, what do they stand for? Would like to. Friends, Yes, madam. Oh, I thought you were going to mention all of them. Okay. At least you should. Strengths, weaknesses, what is the oh, I've forgotten. Then the T should opportunity. be Opportunity. Okay. Okay, so the strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, and threats. Thank you. Yeah. So that that one is a tool also that can help you. It makes you to think. Think of how or what are the internal and external environment of the company. Yeah. But that, that two, number, uh, number four, we also put... it in the plan, the marketing plan. So now this SWOT analysis. Now there in the in the in the in the document in the plan uh, document you will use the SWOT analysis as a summary. That's why you go, you don't explain much in the SWOT. You put them into sentences as a as a summary. That will help and it's very important to summarize it that way because it is going to help you for the other stages that we are talking about downstairs there okay so now let's go to the process we have now answered the question where are we now um sorry so may i ask a question yeah sure yes i just wanted to get some clarity um, in, with respect to the, the marketing audit, um, who would you say is responsible? Audit. The marketing audit, right. Yes. Who would you say is responsible for conducting it? And why is it necessary in the first mm -hmm. place? Okay. Uh, 
in fact, uh, if Google that, find out whether at one time, I don't know, even people tried to write a lot of protesting. It was, that document was, uh, uh, it's asking about uh, the marketing audit. Okay. The document called, yeah, the two called marketing audit. Okay. Yeah. Who is responsible to do that? Now, I was, I was trying to give a, a historical background of it. Uh, it was developed by Chartered Institute of Marketing, by the way, of UK. They are the ones and they floated it. But there's some consultants that really crept that thing and they started using it. They use it for consultants. So a number of consultancy firms tend to use that. As I said, it's a very, it's a very comprehensive questionnaire that after you have written everything, answering most of the questions in that, uh, that uh, <clears throat> audit, it becomes easy to complete your marketing plan. That's the reason why you go to use it. Now, who can he use it? Mostly the marketing practitioners were meant to do that. But as I said, uh, a number of consultant firms got hold of it and they use it actually. So, if if yeah, if in your company, you, uh, and sometimes because it's so detailed, they tend to executives or most manager tend to throw it to consultants. And they apparently, even if you you throw it back to consultants, the consultants will still be coming back to ask you questions. Maybe that's a, uh, the beauty of it because the more they will ask you questions probing, then you are giving them answers, they go to do research themselves, they come back, they are blending these things together. The blending that it's, uh, itself enhances your planning process and uh, it enhances uh, your document, uh, marketing plan, so to speak. So look for it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, very, uh, it's a very useful tool, actually. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Now, now we have answered the question, where are we now? The next question, put the next question, which is question number two. In the process, in the column, the first left column we are calling process. Put that question, where do we want to be? Where do we want to be? Okay, now go to your marketing plan. Uh, you should put there and call it uh, number five, step number five, and the, uh, or, or section number five of the plan, and you shall call it uh, marketing objectives. Of marketing objectives. Good. The tool you're going to use for marketing objectives is called SMART, capital S, capital M, capital A, capital R, capital T, SMART. Now, all we are saying is the objectives ought to be SMART. You may want to flip your page to define what, to define what SMART is. SMART stands for, who can tell us S? The S stands for specific. Good. M? The M is, uh, stands for measurable. Good. A? The A stands for achievable. Good. R? The R stands for realistic. Good. And the T, T stands for timely. Thank you. Okay. Now, you're right. Now, I just want to ask you this question. When you're talking about uh, specific, then you are saying specific as to specific to what? That objectives ought to be specific to what? So it has to be specific to what? That objective. 
I don't know whether my uh, question is correct. Maybe, uh -huh. maybe uh, I would I would say um, specific to your your objectives. Yes, but it's the objective itself that you ought to be specific. Uh -huh. So it means it, um, for it to be specific, it must be related to something. What could that be? Okay, let it be specific as to the activities that your business is doing. So, for example, if we, if we are in education, our objectives will be specifically about the education issues that we do. Yeah, specific. It, then it must be clear if it is specific anyway. Clearly, we are talking about this. It, don't leave it vague, so to speak. Okay. What so, um, yes, yes, so by, by vague, would mm -hmm. you say if the marketing objective is to get more business, yeah. would you would 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 that be considered as vague? As opposed, yeah, that's, that's just too broad. It's not specific. It doesn't. There will be a lot of questions there. What business are you talking about, for example? And what okay. do you mean by getting more business? Okay. It's just so, like you, you you are using what you can call street language, perhaps. It's not really like a business technical language that you're talking about. It's not action oriented. It cannot send you to do anything. I see. So yeah. then more specifically, if your line of business is selling uh, alcohol, would you yes. then say a specific target would be to increase your, the sales of your alcohol by X percentage in maybe say the next two months? Is that more specific? That's becoming more and more clear now. Okay. Because you are saying we're gonna we're gonna increase the sales of mossy or beer, whatever it is, from this percentage X from percentage X to percentage X. Because you got to also state uh, to to tell us where is your position now, other than just to say we increase to X. We don't know what is your position now. For example, or some people just say we increase by five percent. Well, five percent from where? We don't know. Yeah. So maybe you could say from this state to this state. Then you are talking. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. When the, when it comes to issues of measurement, uh, qualitative qualitative uh, objectives are easy to measure. You can use the absolute figures, as it were, or you can use percentages, like the example we just given. How about the uh, qualitative, qualitative kind of uh, objectives? How could we measure those? Because we must uh, be wary of how we are going to measure this, whether we have achieved or not, at the end of the, uh, the period. How could you measure qualitative objectives? Sorry, so the your, your your the line wasn't very clear. Could you kindly repeat it? The... Okay, I was uh, probing from my audience to find out how you could measure qualitative objective, and I was saying quantitative might be easy to measure because you can put figures, absolute figures, or percentages. But how would you measure then qualitative? objectives is it clear now y yes it is thank you okay any thought about it okay i'll give you an example uh mr manda you've uh, stayed for long how would you measure how would you measure love by maybe 
feedback perhaps from the other would, would that be considered a, a level of <laughs> That would be interesting. Feedback. So, for example, you tell them, I love you. Then they said, I love you too. That could right. be a way of measuring. How could you measure? How do you measure that? Uh, uh, maybe I ask it to, uh, I ask uh, Harriet, how would you measure this man loves me? By actions, sir. Huh? By actions, <laughs> you see. It, you are, yes, Madam Kav, what were you saying? I said actions and money. <laughs> and money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I agree with you. Yeah. So that's. Uh, oh, sorry, Mr. Amanda, to hear that. Now, yeah. In short, qualitative. Sometimes we tend to measure it in an indirect way. Those words I've used like love, it's the same like quality. How do you measure quality? You may not measure it directly. Yeah, you may measure it indirectly. So there are derivatives that you need to, to, to put to it. And those derivatives, maybe you may also try to quantify them so to speak. Yeah, you can try to quantify them. Then they can, for example, she's saying me, I would show that this man loves me by money. So she will now say, if this man, if this man leaves me 10,000, then I know he loves me. And the next time, if he reduces it to 1,000, then I said, ah, his love has reduced. <laughs> Isn't it, Madam Gawe? Uh, okay. Joking, but for some people, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. But the, the point is, we are saying try to find a way of measuring qualitative objectives. Yeah. And there the are words the, that you have used there, achievable and realistic. There are a number of other words that you can use under that, under A, instead of just saying achievable or attainable, some words can become like aspiration, uh, actionable, and all those, uh, those, those words can be used as well. And uh, are, instead of just saying realistic, you can also talk about the relevance, reliable, reasonable. Those are some of the words that you can also include under there. Timely is the same as time bound. So uh, like you was talking about uh, moving, have, achieving certain percentages, you must state when you do want to achieve that. That's very, very important. Don't leave it open because you then it, you'll be acting like politicians who we'll never put a date to most of their objectives. Yeah. And they do that for a reason anyway. Now, let's see. Now we have answered that question. Where do we want to be? The next question is how do we get there? How do we get there? In your plan now, which is column number two, it will be number six, I think. Number six is so you're going to say marketing strategies. Marketing strategies. Let's look at the tools. There are many tools, and this one, I'll leave it to you to discover a number of them, but we will discuss only three for the time being. Yeah, but there are quite a number of others as well. So the first two under that is uh, we can use these popularly known as Ansof Matrix. Ansof Matrix. Ansof is a professor, so it's A. N S O double F matrix and soft matrix. Okay. Now, uh, 
he came up with the uh, matrix. The actual term, by the way, for this matrix is called the uh, is called the product market growth matrix. Yeah. So meaning, given two variables, those of a market and those of a product, and as a company. What combinations of these two should it have in order for it to grow? That's what we want to answer. Now, to do that, I want you to draw uh, a rectangular, a rectangle with the four matrices inside it. I don't know. Uh, may I see if I can try to draw and show people? Uh, quickly, let me try to draw that. Okay, we're going to have a market this side on top, and then you have a product this side on the sides, then you have odd on top left and then the old top new and then new now i'm going to try to and mute my my video mm -hmm. Mm -mm, it's taking long. Okay, good. I don't know. Can you be able to see what I've drawn? We can't see anything, sir. No, you great. can't see anything? Yes. Yeah, because I've used the red pen anyway. Ah, uh, what am I going to do now? Uh, yeah, let's see. This, this, I want you to see this particular. Okay, you know, can you see a rectangular? Nothing. I'm seeing something, the, but I'm the wondering. Rectangle, the rectangle is visible. It's just the uh, the words. Oh, the words. Okay. Yes. Now, on top there, I'll show you. On top here, this one here on top, you should put market, market. Okay? You put their market here, and the sides here, you're going, you see this one, is called product. Yeah. So you got the market and the product. Then you have here, it's odd. O-L-D. And here again, odd. So you got odd and odd. Then down here is new. And the, the other end here, the five, it's new. N E W. Sir, are you about to take a picture of it and post it? I don't know how to do those things, madam. You mean you're on the phone? Yes. I don't know. Maybe I can manage. Wait just a minute. I want. To, I hope I won't disturb the. Uh, I won't disturb the. Uh, oh, is there somebody you can use? Ha ha! Why am I suffering? Is there somebody who can who can go on your uh, on your internet and the type answer of matrix it will come out and then you can post it i'll give you two minutes to do that who is very good in that and who has kicked out now who has moved out tendai are you there oh she's the one kicked out Okay, 
Mr. Manda, you have already done it. Mr. Manda? You are here but lost. Why? <laughs> Why are you? Lost. Uh, I'm failing to do that because my I'm using the same camera. I mean, I'm using the same phone, so I can't do with the camera because it's a, it's stuck to my computer. Sorry to say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody who has managed to get the answer of matrix? Harriet, what are you trying to present to us? Good. You found it. Harriet. Yes, sir. I'm trying to figure out how I just took a screenshot. So I'm trying to put it here. I'm failing to. No. Are you putting a screenshot of my notes or the one I said Google it? Yeah, the one you said I should Google. I have taken a screenshot, so I'm trying to place it here, but I'm failing to. You are failing, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. What about uh, sending it to the group? Okay. Okay. Let on me the WhatsApp. It. Okay. No yes. problem. Send okay. that one on the WhatsApp. Okay. Yeah. Can people look at that MBA marketing WhatsApp group? It will come. As she's doing that, there's another one I needed to tell you. You go to, to also do, uh, do that. We shall call it BCG. Aha. Uh -huh. Good. Aha. Uh -huh. Good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are we together now? Have you seen it on your WhatsApp group? Oh, oh, yeah, am I, am I, is everybody on WhatsApp there? Hello? Oh. Are my people there? Well, Hello? Yeah. We're getting you. We're getting you. Yes, sir. We're here. We're getting you. Are you? Yeah, but yes. but have you seen what she has sent on the 
What's up? Yes, we've seen it. Good. That's the one we are talking about. So you can draw that that one. Uh, you can draw it in your in your. Well, you have mentioned the answer of matrix as two number, whatever it should be eight or somewhere there. Oh, yeah. Now you flip the page and you need to draw this the way it looks here. Then they'll put markets there. Existing is the same as the old. And then you got the products down there, existing and new, existing and new. Good. So what this means is that uh, uh, if you have the old product or existing product, and then you are also operating in a particular old market, you have been there for some time, and you're doing your planning, and you have set your goal. Remember what you set your objective there to say, you want to increase from 10 to 15% of your market share, for example. Then what can you do? We say the strategy you can use is called the market penetration. Why? Because you are in the existing market and you are uh, having only the existing product. So the only way you can do is to penetrate the market. Now, how do you penetrate the market? There are two ways of penetrating the market. One is that you attract customers from your competitors. OK? You attract customers from your competitors. That's number one. Number two is that you encourage the existing customers to buy more of your product. So if they were buying one, now you entice them to buy two or to buy more of that same product. These two ways, it shows that's a way you can implement it, that strategy called the market penetration. Okay. I hope you, it's a, it's, it's a, it's not a very risky approach, this one, at all. Because you really, they're already familiar with you, and you already know them, and you know your product already. So it's a question of just how you can convince others to come to buy. Yeah, we'll look at that further into how you can implement that. Now, if you have the same product, for example, and then you take this product to new markets, Maybe you can export these products or you enter into another segment of the pro of the market. <clears throat> that one is called the market development strategy. Market development strategy. Let's go to the one on top there. If uh, you take your new products that you come up with into your existing uh, market, uh, by the way, sorry, Market development tends to be a bit risky because you don't know where you are taking your product to, whether it will be successful or not. So it's a bit risky. Yeah. And depending on the competition there, it might be even more risky. Yeah. But when you have, you introduce now, and if to do that, by the way, you must be very well known in the market, the existing market. Then you introduce a new product. That strategy is called product development product development good and now when you come up with a new product and then you take it to the new market everything is new and that strategy is called diversification diversification and this diversification can be related and unrelated so to speak good so this is what you can call as answer of matrix, as a tool for your making uh, strategies. So you are better off to describe all of this in your document and then emphasize, pick up one or two of these strategies that you're going to achieve, uh, to use to achieve your objective. Good. Let's go to another tool under, under marketing strategy. 
it's also called bcg bcg so harriet is it possible you can type bcg matrix and you send it again quickly okay please bcg matrix and you send it Mr. Chapepo, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I need someone to give Mr. Shingandu some fuel. So you 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 drive back. It's a bit urgent. Okay, sir. Yes. Just call me. Oh. And call me when you reach the plant. How many liters? Just call me when you reach the plant. Okay, sir. Did you say BCG <coughs> matrix? Yes, BCG matrix. Did you get it already? Uh, Mr. Antoka? Is it B? No, okay. Yeah. BCG stands for Boston Consultants Group, by the way. Boston Consultants Group. Okay. Yeah, it was the consultant group who, uh, which was uh, formulated by academicians as well as some practitioners and now it has grown to be a very big company you find it in here in zambia they are represented by young and rubicam okay. yeah so they you, you usually use this as a way of yeah did you manage madam kawe Uh, the other lady, she's, uh, she's, she's been kicked out, eh? internet. Good. Thank you, madam. Okay. Has everybody seen that? Sorry, sir. My phone is slow. That's a delay. But is that the one? No, this is the one that I've, 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 me, I've received it already. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm asking about the others. Others, yeah. have you seen it on you? You've seen, eh? Good. So that in your in your in your document, I mean in the in the tools, you can say BCG, then you flip the page, you draw this. But please don't draw this uh, the way they have drawn the star there with the cow. This are uh, we shall just give them names. But the one that I want you to draw is you're going to draw actually the the official name is the growth share matrix uh, and then you're going to have relative market share there and uh, market growth rate on the other side and there's high and high and the other side low and low quickly if you can do that mm -hmm. So what this means is that, and this is what the way they used this, they were trying to check the positions uh, particular products occupy in a, a firm. Okay, and uh, they used the variables mainly. They used the sales, sales and marketing investments, or revenue and invest. In, 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 Marketing investments. Marketing investments is to do with how much money they are spending when it comes to selling or marketing of this particular product. So, for example, if the market, you are in a market which is growing. Yeah. Yeah. You are in a market which is growing. Yeah. And the it's high and the, your market share is also high that particular product is called a star star now star it simply means it's famous it's a well-known product a lot of people when you talk about it and relate to it that's why it's a star it calls for being famous known 
And in this case, but what happens is that uh, the cash usage for it to remain famous tends to be high. Think about uh, something. If you want to be a politician, for example, yeah, you're going to be famous. But to keep that fame, you'll find yourself you spending uh, a lot of money keeping keeping to uh, keep, keeping uh, giving people so that you keep them on your profile to be uh, people that are going to be praising you so to speak so that's what it means look at any other celebrities the celebrities the stars uh, and they make money but to do that they spend a lot of money also that's what this stands for okay then if you are in a a market which is growing there you can see on top but your market share is low there are two names given to this the first one is uh, what is called question mark and that's why there's that symbol of question mark so why question mark because you're asking yourself why are we not growing when actually we're supposed to be growing so question mark the other one is called the problem child that's another name. This child is a problem. Even after feeding them, they are never growing at all. Okay. So in here, the question mark is you invest a lot, but the revenues are not forthcoming as they should. They should. Yeah. Sometimes here you are almost like zero, zero. You just you your revenue is almost equal to your investment then is there a problem yeah let's go to another stage where the market growth is low and this market it simply means it's mature now and if it's mature you don't need to invest a lot in e advertising marketing activities you don't do that but your market share is high and how did you determine them? How did they determine that? It means you have generated more cash. That's why there is a dollar symbol there. So the actual name which you can put there is called cash cow. Cash cow. Yeah. So it means that product or service that you are uh, marketing or selling is it's bringing in more cash than you what you are investing in. So we, we can call it cash cow. Okay. Then the last one is where the market is not growing and your market share is low. Yeah. You can see that symbol which is there. They call it a dog. So that is a dog. In this dog, it means you don't have cash supplies. Actually, you got cash losses. How much you can be able to put in you may not generate any revenue from it. That's the meaning of, of uh, this matrix. Now, you're going to see that this matrix, it does not give us strategies per se. But what it does, it helps us to think of which position we would like our product to occupy. If I may ask you, which do you see here to be an ideal or a good position for a for a product to up, uh, to occupy? What position would you recommend for a, a product? Of the four. Anyone? I think on the high high where there is a where there is a star. Okay, so Mr. Gakoma Fusi, high high there. Okay, somebody might say no cash cow. I would go, rather go cash cow, for example. Then, if your product after you do your assessment. You find that it's a dog. The question is, you want it to move either to the star or to move it to cash cow. 
the question is how are we going to move this product to do that for us to be in a position of cash cow or star the answer to that which i'm not going to give you is what we are going to term as a strategy now a good thing of this now you can either try to combine it with the one on top there which we talked about the answer of matrix for us to move from a dog to cash cow what should we do then you might decide oh let's develop the market or let's develop the product yeah i'm sure you 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 follow that how they use this bcg good the last one or oh, not last one and i'm i said i would just give you three you are again going to uh, by the way there are others like GC, gce uh gc G, they call it general electric business screening matrix they will call it GE, please, and there are no five departments to eat, nine departments to it. Please look at those ones as a strategies that you can use as well. But there's another one I wanted to use. Uh, you draw again uh, in the first of all before we draw, go in your tools. You call it T O W S T O W S toss. Who can you guess where did we get that word toss from? We are driving it from there. Where? It's derived from where? Toss. Yes. We are getting that from the SWAT, isn't it? Yeah. Now I want you to draw. Again, you flip your page, you draw like the way you have drawn it and so forth, or the BCG. Just draw that with four quadratic matrices. And then you have your T O W S. So the O is on top, the S is down. The T is on top, the W is down. Toss. Now, how do you use that matrix? You know, when you are weak, you don't want to remain weak as a company. The idea is you need to move to S, which is strength. Now, that movement from weak position to strong position is known as converging or convention, sorry, convention strategy. You are converting weaknesses to strength. So convention strategies. Uh, I'm told you can also maybe convert threats to opportunities. So you can also use that as convention strategy. Now, when you are strong and the opportunity is out there, what do you do? You can then uh, use you can use what is called matching strategy, matching strategy. So you match your your strength position to the opportunities out there on the market. Okay, another one is uh, is uh, when you are, there are threats up there on top, what do you do? There are three things you can do. One strategy is called avoidance strategy, you avoid it, the other strategy apart from avoidance is called the uh, bypass so you bypass that competitor you bypass that threat and go and do business somewhere else the third is uh, 
retreat. You retreat from there. The idea of retreating is to ensure that you move to have strength. You move to S. Yeah. So that's that's the use of that toss as a strategic tool. Okay. I'm sure now we are at the same level. Eh? Let's go to the question now. Question number. Uh, no, yeah, question number one, four. Go to the process and ask this question. Which way is the best to get there? Which way is the best to get there? Okay. Now, uh, which which way to get to answer that question? Which way to get? Which way is the best to get there? You go to number seven. So you call it marketing program. You need to develop the marketing program. Okay. If you have written marketing program, go to the tools. The tools, you are going to call it four piece plus three piece. Four piece plus three piece. That's what you need to describe there. P number one is product. P number two, price. P number three, distribution or place. P number four, promotion. Then P number five, people. P number six, process. P number seven, physical evidence. Now, the last three, you use them when you're describing a service organization, mainly. But if you are in manufacturing or things like that, you may end at four. Although in these days now, people go up to uh even including those extended the three piece they do that good i'm sure that one is a straightforward let's go to question number five how do we ensure arrival how do we ensure arrival Then uh, under the marketing plan, under the plan, you are going to say implementation schedule. Implementation schedule, and that should be number eight, I think. Implementation element number eight, implementation schedule. Now, under the tools, under the tools, you shall call it four w's plus two h's four w's plus two h's now flip the page and you define them as this you put a table actually a table with the six columns a table with the six columns and that's the way it should appear in your in your plan six columns and those w's are like questions and the first question is what down there under that what you should say activity so you identify what activity so you go to identify all the activities that you want you need to identify there okay then who can you tell us the next w quickly Are we together? Yes, sir. We are together. Is it where? We are together. 
Good where it means location. Put it there down location. Where is this activity going to be done? So location. The next W I also contribute is when. And when you should put there period or time when you that activity is going to be done. And that time must coincide with the one under smart, the one you did it there. Good. Then the last W is who. Who there is about responsibility. About the responsibility. Now, under responsibility, you ought to have two columns further down there. You should say, you split that responsibility into two. Main responsible person and supporting person. Now, it's better you put names of people other than positions. Just don't just say marketing manager or assistant marketing manager. No, you put names of the people because somebody must be accountable because they're responsible. Who is responsible to carry out that activity? That's what we want to answer. Who can guess the next one? The first H. What is the first H? What question is the first H? Yes, Mr. Gagom. Um, I'm just guessing how. Yes, how. And how, it means method or technique. What method are we going to use for carrying out that activity? We are ensuring that there's, there's implementation there. The last H, who can you guess the last H? Because Mr. Kakoma says I'm guessing. So I can imagine the next one also. You, you can guess the next one also. I'm guessing have. Have we reached or something? Yeah, that's a very good uh, H. I was going to say, you are going to say it means Harriet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But we're going to ask you, is Harriet a question? Ni? Just like have. Have is a question. Right? Have? Uh, no, thank you for, for, for trying also. Yeah. It's actually uh, called how much. And how much it means costing. How much would it cost us to carry out that activity? So under that, you should put costing. Wow. You can imagine the table. Eh? So if the activities, uh, you're going to identify about 10 activities, each of those you fill in like that. You'll be answering those questions like that in each column. Very important. Good. Uh, let's go to the last question. Ah, before, you, we go, before we go to the last question, let's emphasize on the issue of costing. Now, you can imagine after we total all the cost for all the activities, we come up with what is called budget. So put in your in your column, that will be now number nine, I guess. Eh? Or is it number nine or number 10? It's item number what? Number nine or number 10? Number nine. Number 10, eh? Uh, number because nine. Okay, implementation schedule is number number eight. Number eight implementation schedule. Okay. Number nine. So put number nine. Yeah, put number nine. Budget. Budget. Under the, under the two. Budget is income and expenditure. Actually, E and E and I, income and expenditure. So go to the income side and the expenditure side. We don't need to do much. Is that okay? Let's answer the last question. Did we arrive? 
did we arrive? Good. Under the marketing, you are going to call it a, a marketing control mechanism or system. Marketing control mechanism or system. Under the tools, Under the tools, you are going to put SPCA now. Uh, when you've done that, again, we're going to draw like a table. Now, this time with the four columns. Put a table with four columns. Okay. And then you should say S down there on that column stands for standard standard so what that means is that you remember you have identified the activities now you got to set a standard for each activity you set standard it can be in percentages it can be in figures you should be bringing 50000 per per week for example that's a standard you've set. Okay. P will stand for performance. This is when you allow the employee now to work performance. And you got to give them tools for performing anyway. And you need to report for that perform for those performances. Now with that. You go to the next one, which is C. C stands for checking or monitoring. Checking or monitoring. So that's your job is to monitor. What's the purpose of this monitoring or checking? You are comparing the set standards and the performance. Any deviation? either positive or negative of those deviations or up or down you go to do number a the last column you take corrective action so you take action as a measure that's what the a stands for to correct the situation to bring back the performance or the area the direction to where you want to achieve your objective that's what your management is all about in any case anyway. Good. And the, now we're finished number, uh, item number 10 under uh, uh, marketing plan. And we're finished with the, 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 the tools, I guess. Now, we have answered the question, did we arrive? Now, in the market plan column, you add another one, which is now number 11. You call it appendices. Appendices. In the appendices, that's where you put the evidences of what you have written, some of the evidences of what you've written up there. For example, that's where you're going to put maybe quotations, price quotations or you want to put uh, research results or some details that support that is supporting your plan. Certain things you need to have some documentation to support it. So you put them under appendix. Good. Now, go back on top there. Under the plan, you saw we left blank number two, number one. In number two, we write it last, but we put it on top because it enables the company to have a snapshot of what is inside the 
the document or inside the plan. So we call it executive summary. So put number two, executive summary. Don't start with executive summary. I've seen people do that. <laughs> then it becomes like an introduction. And then number one is title page. Title page is where you're going to say marketing man, uh, marketing plan for uh, GPS Marketing Limited for the period 2021 uh, prepared by, you put your name as a marketing manager. That's all. Now, look at that plan. How does it look like? Doesn't it look like it's a document? Hey, are we together or you are, you are, you are lost? Yes, it looks like a document. Yeah, and you can call it as a template, eh? That's, that's a template. And when you'll be doing your assignment, I expect you to use that template. Remember, you're going to do the marketing plan for either your company or for a fictitious company. Doesn't matter. It's just for academic purpose. So that, that becomes your template that you're going to follow. Yeah. Any questions? Sir, um, when we started, you said we should remind you uh, um, something about why do we need to come up with a marketing plan? Oh, yes, yes. So what are you going to use with this marketing plan? And I said, you, whatever answer you give me is correct. <laughs> now that you have gone through this document, the idea is that it, don't be like any other people who are just who just write these things and then forget about them. Why do we have to write this document anyway? Pakistan, I have only got two minutes. Why? Or should I leave that for you to think about and to come and tell me when we meet, eh? Because it's your appreciation, really, I want you to get out from you. Yes, Mr. Ntoka. Yes, uh, I think maybe we can leave it for, for next time, so. For next year, okay, no problem. Yeah, did you hear Madam Gawe? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. I want you to reflect on it, think about it, and say, yes, here's a document in front of me. Why should I spend my time to do this as a marketing manager, for example? What am I going to use this thing use for? And that's very important. Okay, for today, I think I'll leave it there in terms of um, uh, uh, the contribution that you have given. Yeah. So we'll see how, how, how it will go next week. Next week, we'll go back and hopefully people can do that. we we'll go back to uh, uh, what's our date? When do we meet? Uh, can't we meet uh, Sunday again? 
Oh, you want to be meeting on Sundays? Okay, let's try. If people can agree to that, let's try again. That's fine with me. Okay, but you remind me, eh? Yeah. Okay then, good night. Uh, sir, just Thank before you go. Me. Yes, please. Yes, I had a question uh, on, on, on climate. There's, um, there's a Simon one there, but when we open it, there's no attachment. It's, it's not forthcoming? No. Ah, you know, okay, uh, Mr. Manda, you're the class rep. Mr. Manda, are you there? Can you please, uh, uh, just now there, can you write for me your email address? The one you use for governance anyway. Okay, just give me a minute. Y M R O. Y M eighteen seven zero seven at students. Dot Cavendish dot co dot zm. So it's YM eighteen. Wow, you give me an old one. So what's the new one? Oh, you don't have a new one. Or we can give it to somebody who has a new one. Yes, sir. I, I can give you my email. Yeah, just write it on your on the on the chat. It becomes easier for me. Yeah. Okay, that is done. Okay. This is N N N, eh? Yes, sir. N N four five four zero. At the students. dot Cavendish C O Z M. Okay, so I'll send it right away, immediately after we finish, then you can share with the rest of others. Is that okay? Yes, sir, that's fine. Good. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Good night. We'll thank you. Good, Good night. night. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So, gentlemen, do you propose I share the uh, the assignment in the, the WhatsApp group? Yeah, me as at now, if I'm home, I'm facing challenge with WhatsApp. But if tomorrow morning you can share it, I'm able to access it. But once I knock off, I'm having a challenge with my WhatsApp when I'm at home. Okay. No, we now share it with you tomorrow. Okay, no problem. Right. Oh, you can share it on the WhatsApp. Do you? Thank you. We do. No problem.
All right, everyone. Thanks. Good night. All right. Good, good night, night, managers. Good night. Good night.